again, you sick, twisted weather freaks out there. Welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host, the master of disaster, the colonel of chaos, the captain of confusion, DT from weatherist.com. It's Sunday evening. It's January 13th. It's 1030 in the evening. We have weather to talk about as the worm has turned, we think. And we're in for a more active and interesting winter weather pattern coming up. So let's get right to it. All right, uh, the, the addition here, like I, you can see here on the headline, is going to be the worm has turned. Now, that obviously is referring to a significant change in the pattern, which we've been talking about here for the past couple of weeks. A lot of features are coming together. So the issue is going to be how cold and how long it's going to last. Now, before we get into the models here, let me make a couple of points. If you think the only thing this is based upon are the models after going through this video and the last ones and the different posts on the website and the Facebook page, please stop being interested in weather. It means you're a moron and you really shouldn't be following this. This has nothing to do with model-based meteorology per se. We will look at them, we will consider them. There are other features driving this and I pointed that out in the long post I made on Friday on the Facebook page and I'll point it out again here. But if you think this is simply just model hugging, please stop listening and get off the computer and make sure you don't reproduce. Okay, next go to the next slide here. Uh, obviously, the, the, we're gonna have, we have several cold fronts to deal with here. The first cold front is the one coming up, which is going to end the warm period. And th that is becoming a little more significant here for some areas which desperately need the rain. So let's talk about the first cold front coming in tomorrow and on Tuesday. Now, this is the uh, GFS model from earlier today, and this is the total rainfall for the next three days. And you can see there's a pretty good bands of rain here of three, four inches of rain over northern Alabama, northern Georgia, eastern Tennessee, western North Carolina, southwestern and central Virginia, all the way to Hampton Roads and Richmond. This is pretty good rain. This is not to be, you know, this area needs that rain pretty badly, especially in central and southern Virginia. Even some decent rain up towards Charlottesville and uh, southern Maryland as well. So this is much needed rain. Now what's happened is that the models have increased this rain here. This is the new, brand new uh, Zero Z, uh, January 14th. Uh, uh, NAM, and we can see here that the total rainfall has actually increased a little bit. You can see this bright uh, pink stuff here. That's five inches of rain on the North Carolina-Virginia border and in the mountainous terrain. And normally you think, well, the NAM's a little wetter than normal, but given the front's going to stall and given the temperature contrast and the jet streak here, this probably may not be that much overdone. And that bright, dark red area there, that's three to four inches of rain almost into the Richmond area. So this is a lot of rain across all of this area, and we really do need to see the rain. And if we look at the GFS, it's just as wet as the uh, NAM. Now this is a brand new GFS for the next 72 hours of rainfall. That's 4.10 inches of rain over Roanoke or darn close to it and uh, a lot of uh, 2 to 4, 3 inch rains across central and southeastern Virginia including Richmond, Hampton Roads. More rain up towards Charlottesville, uh, heavier rains into eastern Kentucky down towards Bristol and eastern Tennessee and western North Carolina. All the areas, that, these areas that do need the rain. So this is good rain here coming up and it shouldn't be overlooked. Okay. Now let's talk about the next cold front. The next cold front is an Arctic front which will arrive January 17th through the 19th. Now the uh, European model from today is developing a little wave on the cold front here. And this is the European model from Sunday afternoon and I po posted this on the Facebook page but you can also see it here. It's not a big wave, it's not a big deal, it's just a little wave here. Now the white lines here represent, as you can see, let me point it out to you, these little white lines, dots, they represent the rain snow line. You can see them right in here. And so this is all the cold enough for snow at, at the up, at the mid levels of the atmosphere, low levels. And even uh, according if the cold air comes in here, we should be cold enough to the low levels. This is at the 1 a.m. as you can see right here, and this is at 7 a.m. So most of this precipitation that falls in this general area, most of it, should be in this whole area. All this should be in snow in here, and snow in here, and so on and so forth. It doesn't look like a big deal it's not going to be a big storm but there might be something in there and in fact if you look take a look at the 18z gfs it actually has increased the snow a little bit and shows up to two inches of snow falling in the richmond metro area towards lynchburg a little bit and then out towards a one to two inches towards roanoke and then bristol uh, johnson city some good snows in the mountains of north carolina where they need it and eastern tennessee not a big deal just uh, you know something so let's see if it happens you know something to look on to 
And now let's talk about the cold front itself. Now here comes the second cold, the, the, really, really this is the second cold front, the, the Arctic front coming through here. And we can see it very clearly. I can uh, draw the front in very nicely here. Let me, uh, uh, I guess I'll change colors on this for a second here. Uh, here you go. And we can see the cold front very nicely right through here. This is the Arctic front, boom. And here's the, the secondary uh, first cold front washing out already. And uh, you can look at these winds coming in here. Wow, this is impressive. There's a tremendous amount of heavy lake effect snows here. And look how brutally cold is up in this area. This is some impressive stuff. Now, initially, this front here comes south a little bit, but it does not come as far south because the ridge on the west coast is still not yet amplified. So let's take a look at that, and we'll see what we mean here. You can see that the cold air... Um, you can see how it's like very strong in this area. It doesn't come pouring southward. Remember, it's over here. Now it's moving this direction. We can see some cold air getting it down in Virginia, North Carolina. And this is cold here, but it's not brutally cold. Uh, New England, Great Lakes, yeah, this is brutally cold. That's They haven't seen this stuff in a while. This is a big deal. Uh, but down in Virginia, uh, Kentucky, Ohio, Indiana, it's cold, but it's not a big deal. So it's January, mid-January stuff. No reason to freak out over it. But again, to the north, there's a lot of cold air. It's the third cold front, which is the big deal. So let's take a look at that one. Now, uh, what's driving this, and let me emphasize this again, is not just the weather models here, because I want to point this out, as, as some other people have noted, that the weather models, especially this winter, have been terrible past day five. Even the normally reliable European, operationally European, and to a lesser degree the European ensembles, have been at times awful. They have forecasted way too many cold air outbreaks, and there's a good reason to be skeptical about this. But again, let me emphasize, this is an MJO-driven event. Now, here's the MJO. It's very strong. Um, yeah, this is an actual plot. This is not a computer plot. This is an actual f f physical reality which exists in the atmosphere today. So let me uh, ch have to change uh, colors on this one. It won't show up. Go back to this. And uh, we can see this is where it is in January. Now, this is from January 1st. You see the here, January 3rd, all the way now January 12th. You see what's done? So it moved, it developed on January 1st. The MJO moved out here. Remember, this is the strong stuff. The further it is away, this is the all, all strong, and this is weak in here. So the further it is away from the center of this graph, the stronger it is. You follow me? So this is a pretty strong, e, uh, pretty strong event here, as you can see. Uh, and you can see um, there it is on January 12th. It's way out there. And now what this is telling us is that this thing is swinging out at a pretty good pace towards 7 and phase 8. Now phase 7 when it gets really cold, and phase 8 and phase 1 are very cold uh, uh, patterns in the central and eastern United States. So this is what's going on. The MJO is swinging out there towards 6. It's moving rapidly towards phase 7. Now some of the MJO computer models, now these are computer models which forecast the MJO, not the same thing as the MJO itself, are forecasting that the MJO is going to stall in phase 7 or right around 6 or 7. But as you can see the way it's moving, that does not seem likely at all if you ask me. So let's go. Now here, this is an example. This is the European model here. Uh, this is from today's European and it takes it out to January 27. You can see the date right here. January 27. And then what it does is, this is phase 6 and it goes towards phase 7 in this area here, moderate intensity phase 7. That should be enough to cause the pattern to stay consistently cold as you go towards the end of January. But, as we can see here, now this is the GFS this is the GFS ensemble here, it also does this and then it a little dip, drops towards almost weak stat and then comes back up towards a uh, moderate intensity here in phase 7 again by January 27th. Now this is a bit of a change because earlier the GFS was indicating that it was going to stall right here along the edge of 6 and 7. And that had some people worried, had me worried for one thing. But now the GFS ensemble appears to be kicking it more towards phase 7. So that's what's good news. Now let's take a look at the, th at the third big blast here, what I call Big Jake. Now this is a comparison of the European and the GFS models. And the, the, the European, as you can see, um, right here. Oops, let me call this up again. There you go. You can see the European right here. This one, the GFS is right there. And this is both day nine. And both these models are pretty similar with regard to it. The European, if you notice here, look, the European actually has a bigger ridge. You see this? The ridge here is much sharper. And here it's flatter. So well, that's one of the reasons why the European is a little colder. And also because it's got more connection here. You see it's got the heights going like this. Here the GFS has more separation here. So that's one of the reasons why the GFS is actually 
not as cold as the European, which is kind of unusual. Now, this is the GFS from Friday. Now, this is just an exceptional looking map. This is just something you don't see every day. It brings the polar vortex down to downtown Duluth, Minnesota, and then swings it through Michigan and up towards this way. Very impressive looking map. This is extreme. Obviously, the GFS is overdoing this to some degree, but this is what the model's been showing for the past few days. Here's the GFS. Uh, I guess this is from... Um, this would be from uh, the today's run, and uh, this is yeah from uh, yeah the afternoon run. 11 to 15 day, the operational GFS is extremely cold. I mean, look at all this, how bitterly cold it is in here. This is 11 to 15 day. You see down in here? So this is really cold stuff, as you can see. But the ensembles are not nearly that cold. So, But again, that's not a huge surprise given the model tendencies, the overdoing things. If you look at the GFS ensemble, 6 to 10 day, sure, it's cold up in here. You can see that. That's that's pretty obvious. It's cold in here, but it's not brutally cold in here at all. That's not very cold. And if we look at, um, if we go uh, here, this is the GFS 11 to 15 days. You can see, again, um, in here cold in here but not very cold at all so the GFS ensembles are really backing off the cold a little bit here so you know you make a big forecast for a lot of cold and you can get a little nervous here now this is the European uh, this is the uh, day 10 excuse what day is this this is uh, excuse me day 8 European it has a lot of cold air more colder air than the GFS does all coming in here and if we go to day uh, 10 I believe this is going to be day 10. It's got a lot more cold air plunging into the northeast than the GFS. As you can see, it comes way down at the here. So that's a lot colder. Again, why is the European colder than the GFS? Well, a couple of reasons for it. We can, we'll see this right here. Um, a couple of reasons here. First, this is the GFS on this morning, and you can see what it has is, uh, this is day 10. And what's important here, this is critically important, see this storm up in here? This huge, not a huge storm, very intense, helps pull down with the high here. And this low up here pulls down a lot of cold air. That's what lets the floodgates. The GFS does not have that storm. So that storm that goes through New England, that is a big deal. That storm does not show up. The European is going to be too cold, and the cold air will not get as far south. That's a big, big deal. All right, next slide. This is the 12Z European. There's the low again. You can see it right here. See it? There it is, and here's the high. You can see the Arctic high coming in right in here. Now, again, look at the winds coming. This is a blizzard for the Great Lakes, folks. That's what that is. And then the next slide, there's that storm. You see it? Boom! Now, that's pounding the hell out of New England. If this is right, New England's going to get a blizzard out of this. And not a huge amount of snow, not, not a foot, not two feet of snow, but there'll be a lot of snow there, high winds. Look at those winds in New England. And look at the cold air. This is a blizzard, if the European is right. And this is day nine. And then finally, we go to day 10. Now, what's happened here is, of course, the uh, big storm is up in here now. You can see it's way up in here. Here's the big gar gargantuan cold high, and the cold air is rushing southward. That's all because of that storm. That storm isn't there. This is not going to be correct. All right? And if you look at the uh, in European ensembles, it's not as cold. Look. There. 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 The European ensembles are not as cold. Why? Because it doesn't have the storm. That's why. Pretty simple. And if we look at the day 10 European extended, the, this is the one on the left is uh, the 0Z zero zero one. This is a 0Z. Zero and this is 12Z. And they're both very similar maps here. This is a very strong model agreement between the European. Very amplified pattern here. So that's actually pretty good. And then this is the GFS here from this morning. And, and 0Z GFS, the 6Z and the 12Z, you can see that the model of 12Z actually backs off the cold air a little bit because it doesn't have the big storm off the New England coast. So... That's the uh, that's our the uh, presentation. Hopefully, well, that's uh, answered most of your questions. I think it's going to be a pretty cold shot. The big deal is definitely going to be that uh, storm here off New England and day eight, nine, and ten. I'm meteorologist DT. I'll talk to you soon.